Hi, my name is Jonathan Cohn, and this is the second part of the uh, XGrapher video tutorials. In this section, I'll show you how to implement the XGrapher XControl into your project really quick in order to uh, allow an operator or a user of your application to navigate uh, through data very easily. So what I'll do is I'll start off with a new VI, and uh, on the front panel, I'll drag in the uh, XGrapher XControl. Um, and as you can see, it already puts in the timeline uh, viewer on the bottom, the main waveform graph right here. And uh, on the block diagram, it's as easy as uh, this control right here. It's a standard, the same thing as if you were to drop in a, uh, a regular waveform graph. Um, it's the same data type. So what I'll do is I'll change this to uh, an indicator. And I'll plop in some code real quick just to generate a random sine wave. There we go. And this is just going to generate a, a random sine wave of random amplitude, um, 10 hertz frequency, and uh, a certain number of samples. And I'm just plot taking out the, uh, the Y data and wiring it into my X grapher. Now, this wire is going to break because the X grapher actually takes in uh, a two-dimensional array to allow for multiple, uh, multiple plots. So what I'll do is I'll right click and say insert build, uh, build array just to make it a two-dimensional array. I'll go through here and click run and we have a uh, 10 hertz sine wave being generated and as you can see the VI, I only ran the VI once um, but since this is an X control, the X, X control is actually running in the background all the time. So that means that you can actually uh, go through the data and view it um, in real time. Uh, there's no reason to run the VI again. So um, that's a simple impl implementation of the uh, the X control X grapher. Um, other things to note is that if you do want to get the reference of that X control and possibly the reference of uh, the individual graphs, there's property nodes for that. So if we right click on the X grapher and say create uh, property nodes, uh, what we have is a whole list of property nodes available. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you actually can't see those, but what I'll do is drop them up over here. Uh, we have property nodes for cursor positions, which is read and write privileges. Um, we also have property nodes for cursor redraw, which will turn on and off uh, the, the screen animating as you're moving. Um, and we have two references, two get reference commands. And this is to get the reference of the timeline, and this is to get the reference of the waveform uh, reference. So what we can do is we can get the reference of just this waveform graph right here, or this one. If we wanted to change background colors, if we wanted to do any of that kind of stuff, um, it's very easy to do that. Because if you actually click on the X control itself on the right-hand side and say create property node, you're only going to get property nodes available for um, that individual X control. You won't be able to edit those graphs individually. So by getting the references here, we can uh, create a property node off of this, and this is property nodes for uh, the scales or anything involved with, uh, with that individual waveform graph. So that's a very easy way of doing it. Um, here we go. So implementing it is very simple. What I've done with the uh, X control demo block diagram, if I close this, is uh, in this application I pretty much brought out all the features that I've implemented into the X control into front panel diagrams. So for instance, if we uh, if we want to take a look at how the set cursor button works, uh, you can see the block diagram as a joke. I sort of built the block diagram into a um, an iPad for this contest. Um, but if you can see, this is the uh, the simple prompt dialog, which will allow the user to enter a left and a right coordinates for the X cursor, um, and it'll just basically write it into the to the property node. Um, if you flip through here, you'll be able to see a bunch of different stuff uh, that I'm doing. For instance, showing and hiding the X scale, uh, which is done right over here if we run this real quick. Show and hide X scale, if you notice on the bottom, X scale will show and hide. Um, for that, I'm just using a property node of the, uh, the waveform reference, and I'm just turning on and off the X scale visibility property. So again, this is how you would get the property node off of the actual X control. 
Um, there's a bunch of comments in here which will sort of explain what's going on, but in the end, this data type right here, this terminal, is the only thing that we're wiring to to actually get data. Uh, so it's very, very simple to implement. Um, there's no other necessary block diagram uh, stuff that you need to put in there. The right-click menus are all built into the X controls, so uh, you don't have to worry about doing that for each application. And really, it's just uh, drop in the X control, and it's as easy as that. So in my next video, my third and final video, I'll go through the block diagram of the actual X control and try to explain uh, how things are working.